we go. Okay, so uh, we don't have deserialize imported. <laughs> Let's import that. Problem one. Uh, and then we've not actually implemented, uh, like we have this defined, but it doesn't actually return anything. And so this is not happy about it among other things. Uh, so let's see. I bet now that we have actual, yeah, the right things imported. Ooh, what does this do? Common API lib task. Is that, did I make that? <laughs> or is that, is that an imagine, uh, uh, something being imagined? This, this almost looks right though. This is the suggestion from Copilot. Um, we have a URL. That's the, the URL to call back to the upload task endpoint for the service. We have a payload that is essentially reproducing what's inside of body. Uh, and then we call, we make a, a post request to the task API, sending this task. And then uh, we shouldn't use dot expect there. Uh, we need to actually like, instead of calling dot expect, which would cause the, this, the whole like thing to panic, uh, we should match the results and based on, you know, if it's a success or failure, if it's a success, then we're good. And if it's a failure, we should return a, a status message. Uh, let's see if this, is this a thing? Like, no, that's not a thing. Maybe it should be a thing. Maybe there should be a task enum in common API lib. Um, what I don't want to do is I don't want to um, define a task in like the task API and then have this crate for the service depend on that crate. I don't think I want to do that. Maybe I do. What, um, what are the pros and cons of that? So in practice, like if you're imagining that like this, this whole thing was being used at some company, right? And you have a bunch of different teams and some teams are working on different services, then um, on the one hand, if you have like actual compile time type checking from the source of one service into another, then that could prevent errors. But potentially you want to be able to deploy different versions. It, it really depends on like the life cycle of the, the, app, the overall application, right? That these services support, because maybe, um, Maybe those, the services need to be deployed independently. Maybe they all deploy together and like move in lockstep. Uh, and there are pros and cons of that. Um, do I need, do I need, I mean, I obviously don't need to do this like this. It's kind of neat to do. And I could put a task in a um, struct inside of common API lib. I don't think this is what I'm doing elsewhere though. What am I doing uh, over here in another service? So do some validation and then wait now, this, this is the tech segment. So we want to look at detect. Detect is kind of the equivalent in this service of what we're doing in, in YouTube upload API, right? So we, we're just building, we're just using the, the JSON macro to build this out. Um, and like, we can do that, we can do that here like this, right? And so now task is a value from, uh, sort of JSON value and we can just pass that. And then this task, what is the type of this? It's an unknown, right? Um, 
How are we handling this? We look at response. It's a response. Send a wait. And then we do things. We have a task here. And we must be defining that somewhere. Okay, up here it just has an ID. I think What do I think? <laughs> oh, that is a cute emote. That's what I think. That's a cute emote. Hmm. So what I'm thinking about though is that like, there's definitely something that we're doing and we're doing it in multiple places and it would be nice to have that extracted somewhere so that um, we don't have to repeat ourselves over, over and over and over again. And then if we need to change something, we only need to change it in one place. The question is, where does that common code live? Maybe... Maybe it goes in common API lib, again, so that I don't have to have the services depend on each other at like a, <laughs> uh, at compile time. Now, how much of this do I want to extract and how? Like what we don't want to necessarily do is, like we could take this whole function that returns like a HTTP response essentially. Uh, but we, we don't want all of this. We don't want it to know anything about the payload. Like it doesn't need to know these details. Uh, it's not going to know, it's like, probably what we want is something that's going to take a JSON payload without knowing what it is. It's gonna have to take the HTTP client and the payload and uh, maybe it return, maybe it does this part, it generates the URL. So we would give it the task API external URL, we would give it the HTTP client, and we would give it the uh, payload. I guess we'd have to give it the task API URL as well. A few things. A few things. Okay, so I think I, think I know what I wanna do. So I'm gonna create a file called task.rs. And we're gonna do a little bit of refactoring in the middle of this. Uh, so if I wanna create this new module here, I, a thing that I have learned, <laughs> a thing that I've learned, we have to um, declare of mod, mod, mid, mod, uh, task. And then uh, let's see a couple of things that we can do here. And I'm, I'm going to be kind of destructive. So I'm just going to yank things out that I know won't be needed uh, where they are currently. And um, let's also think about this. So I think what I want to do, yeah, we're not going to, I mean, we could call it state. We're not going to call it state, but Essentially, the um, context details, if we called it state, I mean, that makes sense. Like the thing that's gonna call the function that we're about to make <laughs> is gonna have like app state and we're gonna pass that in, but that's super confusing, right? Because this function that is gonna use the struct has um, no connection other than how we're using it. Uh, I might just call this context. Um, what is Copilot trying to do here? No, no, that's all wrong. Uh, let's see. So we want to make a uh, pub async <laughs> function. Uh, and we're going to call it uh, start task, maybe? Start task. Uh, 
pilot's thinking. Nope, incorrect. <laughs> uh, yeah, CTX context, task, task. That That's a good guess, but it's still wrong. Um, I will, let's see, context is a context and um, a payload. Let's, let's do this, let's uh, reframe this a little bit. So this is gonna be task response. I do like the idea of having a struct that is the task, but this will be pretty bare bones. Right, so just it should just be URL and payload. And we won't know what's inside a payload. Payload. Yeah, sort of JSON value. So it's some JSONified thing. Could do that. Yeah, I think that'll be fine. Otherwise, we'd have to be more specific. We could say it's a map, a string, something, something. But it's th this is this is going to be nice and flexible for us. So we have a context and we have a task request, and uh, we're going to return a result that is going to be either a task response or um, a request error. And we're going to post to context.taskAPI URL uh, the task request, and we're going to await it. And then we're going to attempt to get the task response. And does this actually work once we import things? Um, why do we need to? Yeah, we do need to serialize. We do need for was uh oh that's just the, your name is hard to read uh gizmo pug life hey welcome in at least in in dark mode your name is uh is invisible oops i don't want that just want to import quest uh maybe common api lib doesn't know about request like it's not in our cargo toml uh apparently not all right so let's, uh, let's see here. Let's grab, what are we using? We're using all of this stuff. Yank that over to there. And then put that into this service and save. So yeah, Gizmo Pug Life, welcome in. How's it going? How's your Sunday been going? this um, task request serialize is not satisfied right so in order for us to send the task request as JSON the easiest thing to do here is to just derive serialize and sure debug to uh, and we'll import that there we go and then um, my brain hurts I'm learning how to code I'm learning about GUI so uh, I build a time from a program. Build a time from program as my first GUI program. I feel so old. Um, uh, maybe a clock. I'm not sure what you mean by a time from program. What kind of? Um, how are you building? Is it is it like a, a web UI or what kind of programming language? Uh, I am uh, 114 days years old time until program. I see Python. Okay. Interesting. Um, so if you're building a GUI in Python, what are even 
the options there. There's a lot, right? <laughs> uh, it's been a while. I think I, I have done some like, maybe like WX widgets was a thing. What up? Uh, oh, there's like um, all the Tinker stuff. I don't know if that's still around in Python. T yeah, yeah. That makes sense. Okay, so um, this is obviously not Python. <laughs> We're doing Rust uh, and our GUI is a web UI uh, somewhere in one of these tabs. It lives, there it is, using React and a bunch of stuff, you know. Very, well, it is, I have mixed feelings about it, but it, there's a lot of powerful stuff we can do with uh, leveraging web UIs and React and all of that. So that, that's what we're doing. Uh, but for now, I should actually make this work. Just playing around at the moment. Well, at least I, I got to work. Yeah, I mean th that's the thing, right? If you're if you're learning something, it doesn't matter if it's a silly program. Um, it doesn't matter if it's something like I remember long ago being very discouraged and feeling very aimless because I would have an idea for something and I'd be like, well, that already exists. Why would I work on that? Like. I would convince myself that there was no point in writing a program to do this or that because, well, it already exists. But um, that was a lot of missed opportunities just to try, just to figure out how I would do it, just to practice programming. Um, and that was that was a big obstacle for me long ago <laughs> uh, that I really overcame by eventually being in a position where someone needed a problem solved <laughs> and uh, then struggling because I maybe not as much, had as much practice as I could otherwise have had uh, and instead had to figure it out when it really mattered. Mainly learning to get some paid program stuff for free. I see. Right. Yeah. So like, uh, as in there's something that you'd have to go buy a program to do that maybe you could just program yourself. Well, there you go. Motivation. <laughs> All right, so what we wanna, one of the things I know I wanna do here is specifically, we don't wanna return a task response. We actually wanna return a string, right? We wanna return the, um, the URL that we want to return here. Like this is wrong. What we want to do is, I think, hold on, let's see. Like this over here in this tab is stuff that Copilot generated for us. I do data entry for work. I am paying uh, 200 uh, pounds a month for simple stuff. I see. Yeah, data entry is a place where uh, sometimes it can be tricky for a couple of different reasons, right? Because maybe there's some uh, complicated uh, or involved or not trivial, at least, um, thinking about how to take the data <laughs> to get it where it needs to go, but also then actually um, interfacing with existing programs to get the data in. Um, there are definitely ways to like, just like, if nothing else you could, um, it's really great when programs or places where you're trying to get data in have like APIs of some kind to interact with, but that's not always the case. Okay, so what I'm trying to do is provide this functionality. Like this is what we need to actually have out of our function is the URL. Um, uh, stepping back a little bit, what I'm, what I'm trying to achieve in the short term is extracting a bit of common functionality that's being that, that I've basically pasted a couple of times uh, in a couple of different services and I want to just be able to reuse it right so we can we do something like this and then um, this is going to be well I, I can go the other way so like I can take 
task response. And I'll just read task response.id. Um, what is the used in question mark to decide whether the operator should produce value? Property value back to the caller. So I think this works because this function returns a result. So we're gonna get back. Okay, here we go. The type uh, task context is more private than the item start task. Right, right. So we can't, we can't expose, or we shouldn't anyway, expose a public function that takes a private, or at least not public, uh, struct. So this needs to be public, really. Um, and then task request also needs to be. Task response does not need to be because we are, we're just using that internally. We're not actually returning that. And state is the wrong thing because I copied and pasted that. It's actually context. Uh, what do you mean task API external URL? Ah, there we go. Okay, so this needs to be here as well. There we go. This API base URL we don't need. All right, and there was a message. It might take me a few months to learn just enough to code it. I know I might be able to get an AI to code it. Uh, what I had done in the past, uh, but legit rather not AI code, even it's gonna be a little bit better. I mean, that's the thing is that um, I, I have often, like the way I think about like stuff Copilot gives me, uh, because I have I've worked with and mentored uh, people who were uh, not necessarily new to coding, but had you know some like they've done a boot camp or they've come up fresh out of college, uh, and you know so junior um, devs, junior software engineers, um, and they have good intentions, but. Um, they are not necessarily familiar with the code base or with good practice in general, let alone what makes sense in context. Um, and uh, in a lot of ways, what Copilot and other AI tooling will do uh, is in a similar sort of vein where you, you have to be really critical. And if you don't, if, if you are kind of also junior, you're maybe not in a, the best position to make that kind of assessment, right? So it would be no different than having a problem and Googling it or looking at Stack Overflow. And if you just copy and paste some code from the internet, um, maybe it'll work, maybe it won't. You can try it or you can try to reason out why it might be right or not. And that that's valuable for learning. Um, it's not going to necessarily be better. Um, <laughs> it's not gonna necessarily do what you want, uh, especially like I've seen some, some cool demos where someone is like, they don't have a project yet. And uh, they're just like, hey, AI, you know, I want to do this thing and it generates some code and it just, it basically just works. But that is like when you don't have a project, when you don't have to make something that fits into something else. Um, what's nice about Copilot is in, in other tooling uh, is that oftentimes it will, it will make things that make sense in the context of the project, um, which I think is how we ended up with several different services that have the same code because it is really good um, at basically doing copy paste but putting in different values to match the context around it. Um, Alex says, I'm a person that gets bored easily and finds new people <laughs> always come back. Sure. Mm. All right, so what are we complaining about here? Uh, field minister struct, something, something. 
Uh, let's save this. Maybe uh, Rust Analyzer can tell us any problems. So this seems fine. So basically all we're doing here is we're calling um, the task API URL with the request that we're gonna automatically serialize. And then we are awaiting the results and then we are parsing the response and we're getting the ID out and we're building a URL in kind of a naive way. Don't get me wrong, uh, uh, Gizmo says. Uh, going to use good, uh, use an AI to help me put, never just copy and paste code. Uh, oh, Google and AI, right. <laughs> um, I mean, I'm not saying that there's anything like, well, there, there are, are, are gotchas around like, um, copying code from places around like licensing and stuff maybe. Um, and, uh, especially if like, if you're working in a professional setting, you're writing code that you're going to be distributing, uh, et cetera, et cetera, all sorts of caveats. Um, but there's lots of good code and good like advice and examples of things, uh, in the world. Um, and if it works, <laughs> then if you can use it, then use it. What am I making uh, the new Minecraft? Uh, make a Minecraft pack then? Yeah, I, I've been floating the idea of working. Um, I mean, I did, it's been a few months now, I guess at this point, I worked on um, some modding stuff. I actually have like a, uh, a repo on my GitHub where I was just like testing around with doing a, a fabric based Minecraft mod, uh, just like trying stuff out. Um, I do have some ideas for a pack. A realistic mod looks awesome. Yeah, there's another one. Um, there was another one that um, adds like level of detail rendering. I forget the name of it. Okay, so we should be able to like rewrite this to use this new function. Um, it is gonna be a little different. So like we, if task API returns an error, then return an error. So we should probably, let's also do that. And then, does this make sense? Is this a thing that we can do? Function new is private. Can we, can we make an error? Which error is this error? That's this error. Okay, maybe we don't want to return a uh, request error then. Do something like this. Error task failed. That's not a thing. That's not a thing at all. Uh, here we go. So we want probably core error error. Use of unstable library feature error and core. Okay, so that's not a thing actually. Try again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I don't really want to use axim error, but I could if I have to. Oh, standard error error. That's probably what I want then. Maybe. Um, right. Because it's a trait. It's a trait representing basic expectations for error values. So if we want to use that, 
for a result. So here's a, here's a thought. Let's look at the definition of result. Um, must be an error variant. Uh huh. Interesting. Is that second type? Uh, yeah, we have to provide that. Maybe, maybe this is this can be simpler. What if it's just a string? Uh, let's see. Gizmo also says, I uh, also want to know, uh, also want to know something funny going back to college in September for level two digital technology since my quals I can't really use in my local area of like qualifications and IT is a backup field. So I'm sick, sick of doing a uh, dead job, maybe like dead end job in the program language uh, on the course, not going to Python, going to be C sharp. Uh, I don't, I don't have anything against C sharp. Um, it's, it's a language. <laughs> but, uh, let's see. So we want to use match here. And then we're going to handle if, uh, if the result is a good response, like a good result, then we'll take the response. If it's an error, then we're going to return, uh, our error. Five months to learn both. Wow. Well, don't give up. Uh, oh, this is an out-of-date error. It's one thing. Um, I'm the developer experience that I've had in VS Code with TypeScript, in terms of getting more immediate feedback, like even before saving, is nice. Whereas with the Rust Analyzer extension in Rust and VS Code, I have to save out to get feedback. I wonder if that's, um, I've just gotten used to, <laughs> uh, do I want this to be a string or, yeah, I guess that's fine. And then we're gonna do the same thing here where we're gonna, uh, because when we're, we're parsing the JSON, which is what, what's going on here, we could fail to parse the JSON. So we'll get a string error about that. And now this should be good. Looks like we have a, oh right, we don't, we don't use that anymore. Okay. So this should make it so that we can call, um, it's like if we take this bit out, We should be able to do start. Uh, let's see. Let's do um, common API lib. Yep. Task. Ooh, maybe I should just call it start. Maybe I should just call it start since we're already in the task um, module or run. Something like that. Start. Uh, and then we do a context. And then our task request, which to be fair also needs to be a task request. Um, and then I guess we also, let's do this. Let's, uh, we'll import task from common API. That way we can do it like this. And this will be this will be a nice structure, uh, and then this part isn't necessary. Um, oh, we have more things now than I think I was anticipating. Okay, so what we'll do? We're gonna change task request to incorporate these other fields. Title was something that I added the other day because I um, I don't know if it's in this branch. Yeah, it is. So I added this little thing here so we can see uh, tasks that are underway. Another elemental dragon. What's going on with PCG today? Um, I think I think we have an issue because this should not still be processing, but I'm, I'm not dealing with that now. 
But uh, yeah, so I added the ability for tasks to have a title so that that could be displayed in the UI. Uh, and then the other thing that we have here is a data key. That data key is for the task uh, worker to be able to know where to look for the data in the task result so they can pull it out. So that also needs to be a string. Why is this, okay. Takes a second to update. All right, so this should work. Like now we're gonna start a task and then uh, what we get back is a um, task URL if it succeeds, right? So we're gonna match on task, task start uh, dot await because it is async task, uh, it is a async function. We have to await it. So task URL, it doesn't know it yet because it, it needs to update things, but it will be a string. Uh, if there's an error, then we're gonna return a 500 error back to the client that called this uh, this endpoint that we're implementing. And then all of this goes away. I don't care about debugging the response right now. We're also already handling this scenario where the call to the task API fails. Um, and then we're handling parsing the response body already. And um, we're also constructing the, the URL here. So now we can just do task URL. Can I, can I do it like that? Uh, now it's complaining because I've not yet uh, imported task from Common API lib. So what's it complaining about? Field is private, yes. I also realized I did not put anything into context. We'll deal, deal with that in a second. Um, so this, the structs here uh, need to also be, the, the fields in the struct also need to be labeled as public. All right, and this, so I could do, so here's a question, what's better? Is it better to use a string reference in the struct? What if I did this? No, then we'd have to specify the lifetime of the reference, right? So I can do this and that makes this happy. What is format return? Well, it's a macro, so it doesn't exactly return, but I guess it, is fine this way. So why why str versus string? Rust libraries may assume that string slices, which apparently is what str is, is a valid UTF-8. Um, So if like we look at a string, what is what is this? It is a UTF-8 encoded growable string. It's the most common string type that has ownership over the contents of the string and has a close relationship with its borrowed counterpart, counterpart the primitive STR. Need more coffee and go back to learning? Sounds good. I need more coffee too. Thank you for Gives the follow. Gives the pug life just followed. Appreciate it. We're, uh, we're on our way to that uh, 250 follower goal that I think is the, the current goal. Let me see. Follower, yeah, 250 is the current goal. Oh, what is this? Hold on, I see a new thing in the goals thing about plus program. I'm gonna have to look into that. Anyway. Um, so why is this unhappy? Ah, so the size for values of type str cannot be known at co uh, compilation time. So we would need to do extra work if we use str here. So this is why it's a, st a string. 
Uh, I swear I drank more coffee in the past three days learning than I have my whole, well, coffee's great. Uh, moderation can also be good. Don't, don't overdo it. Um, you said you have five months to learn both. So, uh, <laughs> tortoise hair analogies, all, all that stuff, you know, uh, don't, uh, I mean, the bad thing is like energy drinks and stuff, but I mean, you could, you could definitely, <laughs> Uh, you want to be able to get some good sleep too, right? Because uh, I feel like sleep is really important also to like really lock in the stuff, stuff that you're learning. You got to take care of yourself is I guess what I'm trying to say. All right. So, um, right. So if we have a, if we want a string year, we got to do two string. which Copilot can handily do for us. And then I save so that I get my error updated. And then what we have to do is we have to fill in context. Copilot's nice enough to do that for us, maybe, sort of. Field is private, yes. <laughs> have to do the same thing here. Um, we could uh, like make a new, um, like we could implement stuff to fill in the context rather than making them public, but I don't care. This is just a bag of things so that I don't have to make a function that takes like um, four, more than <laughs> two or three arguments because I, I don't like that. Um, then you run the risk of like losing track of the order of them and such. It's much nicer just to have a bag to put stuff in that stuff is categorized. All right, and then this is complaining because um, are we using different uh, versions of request? Or, so we have HTTP client here. That is defined as a request client. And I'm guessing we, it's also a request client. Okay, so probably common API libs, uh, request is different than silence detection APIs request. It is different. We haven't upgraded this one. Okay, so this would be good. So I'm just gonna copy this over to here and hopefully not break anything. And then uh, to be fair, I don't need that much sleep. Uh, as last year I was doing two jobs, one day shift for three days a week, then one night for two jobs, one day shift for three days a week, then one night uh, for five days a week. Oh, I see. So you were doing some, you were doing uh, a day shift three days a week and a night shift for five days a week, concurrently. Well, I mean, if you can do it, Friday and Saturday was hell, yeah. I mean, yeah, I, I value my sleep. Okay, so we don't need that anymore, or it never did. We're not using that debug anymore. Um, this, I don't think we need that. We can just do that, right? That still works. Okay, so now our our top level endpoint here to like queue up the task almost fits on a screen. If I zoomed out a little bit, it would. As the shift was 2 a.m. to 10.30, then 12. <laughs> To 8.30. Uh, uh huh. That is. Uh, I mean. It's, it's, that's not great. <laughs> I would. If I had a choice, I would not. I would not do that. <laughs> uh, what's going on here? Oh, I see. Okay, so this is this is a match, right? So we're we're the formatting looks a little weird to me, right? But this is the value that we're so this is a result, and then we're matching on it, and this is the the arms of the match. Okay, so this this does the same thing. Um, there is still some stuff that is going to be repeating uh, here, but. 
much less. Right, so if we go over here, I'm just gonna like, I'm gonna go up to here, I'm gonna replace this bit with this, and then we're gonna save this and this is gonna fail. <laughs> there we go. Let's import task from common API. Uh, I got Zach, oh, Zach from both of them, as I found out I was, oh no. Well, that is, I'm sure not what you wanted. All right, and then payload here, we'll just take this payload and we'll move it down here. And then we don't have a task title. We're going to, um, yeah, we should have, we should have a task title though uh, on this. That's something that I did decide uh, the other day that the front end is going to generate the title for the task and send to the back end. Uh, no plus good money as well. Uh, and amounts of pounds uh, a week after taxes. Well, that's... Uh, it's too bad. Right, so what am I looking for? I'm looking for the uh, struct here. So we're gonna add a uh, test title. There we go. All right, so now, uh, oh, this bit is wrong. All right, so this is not the text segment. It's um, you, what is the what does the API look like? So this API base URL, um, and then it's upload task. Yeah, this part. This part. We're basically telling it how to call back to the other endpoint. Um, and then data key is interesting. Um, it's not going to matter because we're not, I mean, potentially we could have something come back from the task is kind of like a summary of what it did. Um, okay. <laughs> summary. We can do that. The, the purpose of this is like in our other use cases for the task API, when it calls back to like detect a segment of silence in the stream video slash audio, rather, um, we return a key in the response called segments, and then that has a list of segments, and then the task API aggregates all of those. Um, it's not gonna work exactly the same way because the intent is the task API is only gonna call uh, upload task once, but um, we have to make it look somewhat the same, unless we want to change kind of the, the semantics and the interface between these things. And I don't want to commit to that quite yet. So we'll, we'll just go with this. Uh, we also need to import not, <laughs> not request header. We need to import from uh, Axum. Uh, it's probably in response here. So we should be able to do like, is it there? Uh, import header directly. Maybe it's, um, maybe it's in here. Copilot seems to think so. Yeah, there we go. All right. So that uh, should finish upload start task handler, which it just, it makes another API call. It's, it's basically translating for us. Uh, Amber alert. Interesting. Okay. Anyway, um, it's it's basically translating the the request from the front end into the request to the task API, um, so that basically the front end only interacts with the task API to like be able to see overall what what tasks are they running what's their status, um, so that we don't have to tell the front end how to tell the task API about other services, right? So we're, we're trying to 
confine the details about like how to do that into the service itself. All right. So we're actually almost to the point where we can actually upload a video to YouTube. Uh, I think what we'll do first is, um, let's see, how do I wanna do this? So access token is the extractor that we've implemented here. Um, we don't have to worry about this thing being in a certain order. So I think what I'll do is I'm going to uh, create a new function. Uh, hey, Pedro, uh, 1984. Welcome in. How's it going? How is your Sunday morning? If it is morning for you, it's still morning for me. All right, so is this, is this what we want to implement? Upload video handler? What's the name of the, yeah, upload video handler. About to start a coding assignment, tuning in for the chill and for the co-working company. Well, hey, welcome. Um, you're uh, GMT plus one. Okay, okay. So you are, uh, it's about seven something there then? In the evening? Oh. Interesting. My my clock seems to think because I have Dublin time on my uh, on my Windows uh, clock, and it seems to think it's it's uh, six in Dublin. Is that a <laughs> daylight? Uh, is that hmm, interesting? Time zones are hard. What is Copilot trying to get us to do here? I don't, I don't think. Oh, it doubles in the same time zone. Hmm. Sure, but wouldn't that be, wouldn't that just be GMT then? Dublin is west of, uh, <laughs> west of that. Oh, you're in Portugal, okay. It's been time, okay. Interesting, interesting. No. <laughs> Hmm. Yeah, right. Shenanigans, exactly. Like I said. <laughs> uh, do I do I want this? I don't think I want this. Um, I mean, I do want just async function something or other. Wait, how do I? Uh, isn't it control? Right here. There. Okay. I do want this first bit. I don't. I just don't want the implementation that Compile is trying to give me right now. Okay. So let's let's start by just like returning, <laughs> um, like just the status code. Okay. There we go. Something like that. Uh, that way we can actually try calling this endpoint. It was GMT plus zero until a couple weeks ago. <laughs> Right. Uh, okay, so what is this? What is this upset about? What have, what have we done wrong here? Uh, the trait bound, FN, yada, yada, yada. Impl future output into, into response. Handler is not satisfied. I have not, here we go. The trait handler with some type parameters is not implemented for FN item, function, state, JSON, access token, impl. The following other types implement trait. Yeah, layered and method router required by, by a bound in post. Great. It's a little impenetrable. Uh, <laughs> are we doing the right thing here? So, like, we have this route. And it takes a method router, and we can call post. 
and we pass in the handler. So structurally, this looks right. Although I kind of wish the auto formatting would do it like this way, maybe. But no, it doesn't like that. Uh, my first guess is that we need to do things in a different order. Yeah. So the parsing the body needs to be last in the list of uh, extractors. Aha. <laughs> now, how, how could you arrive at that from that error message? Um, besides just knowing it, I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, uh, but anyway. Okay, so now we have something that would actually compile. Hopefully, let's. I'm using Docker Compose, and uh, like everything is a separate container for each of the services. We have a Docker file, uh, etc. But uh, it is somehow been another hour since our last break. So I'm gonna take a little break here and um, go fill up my water again. And uh, I'll be back to uh, make some API calls and actually maybe upload something to YouTube. <laughs>